Hey everybody, it's Dan the Git School Dude with another Git tutorial video. Today we're going to be talking about GitLab CI and how you can parallelize jobs uh, using GitLab CI. So if you've been keeping up with my other videos about GitLab CI, you'll know that the GitLab CI design purposefully abstracts the user away from defining workspaces using a scalable system in which artifacts must be defined job to job. So before we get into details of this video, if what I just said confused you, you may not have seen my previous videos on GitLab CI. If that's the case and I lose you during this video, feel free to pause at any time and go over and check out the previous videos where I explain in detail what I'm talking about here, um, especially the GitLab CI vision, artifacts, workspace, and runners, and the introduction to GitLab CI. As an aside, I've created a couple playlists for you guys. This one focuses on GitLab and GitLab CI, and I have another one that just collects uh, pretty much all of my videos on Git uh, in order. So let's go ahead and get started here. So today we're going to be using the Hello World repo, like we typically do. And uh, what we're going to be looking at today to actually parallelize these jobs is this GitLab CI YAML file, which, as you recall, is where we define uh, all our jobs and stages. Now, this directly controls what gets run in GitLab CI. So if I flip over and show you the pipeline section, you can see that we have a build stage with a build code job, and we also have a run stage with a run a nominal run job and you can see that those directly correlate to what we've defined in this file which controls all the testing for GitLab CI in your project. So today we're going to actually add a couple, uh, we're going to add a new job to the run stage that we have defined right here uh, which will make the new job execute in parallel within that stage but before we do that we got to change the code around a little bit uh, so that we actually have multiple ways to run the code I've already created an issue where I describe what I want to change over here. So let's bro down and crush some code. All right, code has been crushed. If you guys are interested in all the code changes, go ahead and check out, uh, let's see here. Merge Request 9, and you can go over and check out all the changes. The, the changes aren't that particularly important for this video, so that's why I'm skipping it. All you really need to know now is that we now have two ways, oops, two ways to run the code. So we can run dot slash hello, and uh, it's a simple program that just creates some classes with boxes that each have a name uh, with uh, length, width, and height. But we can also pass it command line arguments now and essentially it will create boxes of those names and then print them out. So it's pretty simple stuff, but the point is we need more than one way to run so that we can test these things in GitLab CI. Now that our program has more than one way to execute, we want to start testing this new way of running, and GitLab CI makes this super easy. We can do everything from the top level hidden GitLab CI.yaml file. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add a new job to this existing stage. So let's just go ahead and do it real quick. Okay, so I'm creating a new job. We'll call it command line run. We're going to use the same image as the other jobs in the script section. Instead of just running it, we're going to give it some command line arguments. Okay, so it's in the same stage uh, as the nominal run, and this is literally it. This is all we have to do. We just create a new job, tell it what to do here, assign it to a stage, write the file, commit the file. And now that we've committed the change, all we got to do is push our topic branch to origin. And it's been pushed. We're already assigned to merge request 9. So if we go ahead and flip over there and take a look at merge request 9, refresh the page, you can see, go to the top here, we've got a pipeline pending. This is the new pipeline. And if we look at this drop down, we see the first one has build code. It's waiting on a runner for it to be picked. And the second one already has two jobs created. Now, of course, they can't run until this run is complete. So we'll wait for that to complete. But literally, all we did was add a few lines in a file. And now we're going to have two runs that run at the same time. So let's take a look at that. Open up the pipeline and another tab. 
We can see it in this view, which shows the graph view. Now, the build stage has one job, the run stage has two, and they use sort of this notation to show that things will run in parallel in this stage. So we can see the build code stage is running. If I click on that, open a new tab, I can see what's actually happening here. Okay. The build code job has finished, it is completed, it's passed. Now downstream jobs in the run stage are running and you see they're running at the same time. Super cool. So I could open each one of these in new tabs and see what they're doing at the same time. So this is the command line run and this is the nominal run in the other tab. I'm flipping between tabs, you can't see it here, but that's what's going on. So you can see that they're both uh, pulling down the Docker uh, image that we set up in a previous video and preparing the workspace to run exactly what we told it to run in that YAML file. So we'll wait for this to complete. Okay, you can see that both jobs are now complete here. If you recall from the previous video, when the build code job is complete, as we've defined the artifact of the Hello binary, it gets uploaded to GitLab, and then when these workspaces are created, that Hello binary gets downloaded to both workspaces so that both of these jobs can run in parallel. If we look at the output of the command line run job here, we can see at the very end job succeeded, and we can see that it ran with the command line arguments uh, up here, hello Dan, get school dude. We get different output because of the code changes that we've made when we give it command line arguments, and we can see that the job has succeeded. If we flip over to the nominal run, you can see that it is running without any command line arguments, and it's doing the same test that it was doing before because we didn't make any changes to that job. So the last step is to accept the content in the merge request. Here we can look at the, all the code changes if we want to. Uh, this is going to contain uh, two commits. The first commit I didn't show you guys. It, it did his prep work. It just added the command line arguments uh, to the binary, so it made the code changes for that. And then what we just did was add uh, the GitLab CI YAML changes, which are defined right here. I don't know why it's displaying this way. I've got either an old browser or GitLab.com is actually running with some kind of UI glitch, but it's not supposed to look this way. So that's it guys we've gone from one test to two tests each running in parallel and we did it in what a couple minutes pretty impressive stuff i kind of wanted to show even more tests as part of this video but i thought better of it because I, I had an idea so instead of doing all the code changes and tests myself i thought i might leave the door open for you guys to contribute so if you're interested in some hands-on learning go on over to to the project page gitlab.com slash let me bring this down here Get school dude slash hello, create a topic branch, create a merge request, change the code around if you want, add a test or two that execute in parallel in our pipelines so that we'd get a couple more tests down here. Then in the merge request, go ahead and flag me using the get school dude notation. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, I haven't really gone over this, it's real easy. All you got to do is in your merge request, do this, tab complete. And then if you do this and you send me a message, like this check this out I will get an email directly so otherwise I don't know if you're creating merge requests because I don't have the notification set up but anyway go ahead and flag me in your merge request if you're gonna do that I'll merge the content and then we will have officially collaborated on a project together isn't that sweet alright I hope you all found this helpful be sure to hit that like and subscribe button I'm Dan the get school dude thanks for watching I'll see y'all next time <laughs> Hey there YouTube fans, it's Dan the Get School Dude here. If you're like me, sometimes it can be difficult to learn a new concept just from watching a YouTube video. That's why I've decided to create an entire suite of training programs that can be delivered in person or even remotely. This training really takes things to the next level. We're talking PowerPoints, hands-on exercises, jokes to keep people awake, Q&A, the whole nine yards. If you think your company could benefit from a more formal approach to training, check out continuoustech.net slash training to take a look at the training programs we offer. Thanks for watching.